Want some decluttering tips? How about some steps to declutter your home? Hi, I'm Julie. I'm all about toxin-free living, homesteading, dabbling, and keeping it together. In this video, we'll take a look at day five in the 21-day journey to minimalism. In this quest, the minimalist, Josh, directs us to evaluate all the non-essential things in our lives to develop a discerning judgment, to see if these things are adding value or subtracting from our happiness. I've been on a minimalist journey for about six years, and I'd like to share with you my experiences in the hope it offers you some guidance and support if you're on or moving towards that type of lifestyle. So before we get started, let's diffuse some adaptive. It's doTERRA's Calming Blend. This essential oil helps improve sustained attention while easing the body and mind. Use Adaptive to help get comfortable with new surroundings or situations. In preliminary studies, the scent of lavender, a main ingredient of Adaptive, has been found to contribute to an environment conducive to performing tasks requiring sustained attention. In this blend, lavender, magnolia, neroli, and sweet gum provide stress relieving effects while wild orange and spearmint energize and uplift. Copaiba and rosemary soothe anxious feelings to round out this calming blend. Whether you're feeling fatigued or restless, indecisive or irritable, this calming blend is part of the toolbox to help the body and mind stay balanced. We could all use a little bit of that. Am I right? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. So I am using the Pebble Diffuser. This ultrasonic diffuser has a five hour continuous or 10 hour intermittent diffusing time. Now on to decluttering and evaluating those non-essential things in our lives. First, we need to realize what the costs of those non-essential things are to us. So number one, what does it cost to acquire it? Number two, what is the cost to maintain it? And then number three, using things takes our time. And what time would we use to use this item? Number four, keeping things brings us added stress. I read an article a few months ago that identified how social norms influence us early on to become consumers. Sometimes I think it becomes our quest to buy things because we're told it will bring us happiness. Yet this quest to obtain all these gotta have things creates an insatiable thirst because it will not bring us true happiness. Our focus gets turned to the outside, to our environment, to make us feel fulfilled and happy, and I know I've been there. It becomes all about the appearance, what we have, what we look like, instead of focusing on finding fulfillment and love within, being a caring person and making the world a better place. So a bit of backstory, back to the declutter, a bit of backstory on me. I moved to my homestead property, property in the winter of 2019, and my intention was to start building my home in the spring of 2020, but the pandemic hit. And with the volatile building industry on so many levels, and my intent to build without a mortgage, I put off building my house until things get back to normal. <laughs> so for the past two and a half years, I've been living in a 30 foot trailer, tra travel trailer, waiting for the right time to build my house. And this has been a great learning experience for me. I'm starting to realize what's really necessary for living and my quality of life. However, even in my limited space, it's still hard not to collect things, which quickly become clutter in this tight space. Only this time it has a greater effect on me by adding to my stress and my emotional well-being with having the clutter all around me. So I'm glad I'm diffusing adaptive. <laughs> 
So here's this episode's challenge. Start looking at all the non-essential things that you own, especially in your living area. Evaluate what does it cost to have it in your life. Start small. I'm starting with my bathroom. I have so many things on the shelves in there because it's a room where the cabinets hide it all. <laughs> now, here's the evaluation questions again. Number one is, uh, and since we have the clutter already or the non-essential items already, we're looking at the cost of it in a different way. We look at it, if we get rid of it, what would it cost to replace it if we needed it again down the road? And I think you kind of have to throw that in your evaluation for the, um, when you're getting rid of the non-essential clutter. And hopefully that will allow you to look at it objectively and not send you down a rabbit hole through the evaluation process. <laughs> so moving on. What is the cost to maintain the non-essential item? What is the time required to use it? And finally, does it bring you added stress? especially if it's taking up valuable real estate in your living area. So what do you have? Do you have any non-essential items you can get rid of in your house today? And what will you do with your decluttered items? Sell them, donate them, or trash them? If you accept this challenge to become a decluttering minimalist, Write in the comments what you discovered in this challenge and if there is anything you are going to change in the future on how you acquire things. I'd love to hear your story. We all have different perspectives to share and it can be a benefit to all of us. I'll provide in the description the link to the blog post from the Min Minimalist website for more information on this challenge. I'll also include the link to the Adaptive Blend Essential Oil and Pebble Diffuser that I used in this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more information on toxin-free living, using essential oils, homesteading for beginners, and organizational tips to keep it all together.